Good morning everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. So today we're going to be talking about planting tomatoes. I'm going to give you a few tips so you can be successful at growing a great crop. So stick around. Okay, so let's get started. We are going to be planting uh, tomatoes in our raised garden bed. This is in our screen house, which you've seen on previous videos. And we do typically like to put a few in here as well as in our top garden, because in this particular screen house, it's critter proof, so nothing can get to the tomatoes. So we plant a few in here every year. I'm going to be planting, this is green tiger. This is a new variety I'm starting this year. And I think I talked to you guys about the peat pots. I'll show you what I do. I don't plant the whole peat pot. You can, uh, they are biodegradable. They're supposed to decompose in your soil, but I haven't had any luck with that in the past. It takes a long time for the roots to get through this pot, in my opinion. So this has been amended with a good quality compost. I've worked it into the soil, so it's ready to go. Now one thing about raised garden beds is you do not want to change the soil out every year. What you're trying to do is build a nice little ecosystem full of worms and microbes and all that good stuff in the soil. So you just want to keep adding good nutrition to it every year. So once we've amended it with the compost, we're going to do a couple things. I'm going to first dig a hole here. And this is so loose, I don't even need like a trowel or anything. I'm just going to dig a hole. Now with tomatoes, many of you know this, you want to plant them nice and deep. So I've got a nice deep hole there. I'll just kind of gauge it. Yeah, so it's probably going to be planted up to there, which is a good, this, this stem will send out roots all along here. And we want to create a nice um, big root system for this tomato so it can uptake nutrients and be a happy plant. I'm going to plant it towards the back of this bed because I am going to be putting some peppers in front of it and maybe some basil as well. So what do I start with here? I'm going to start with this BioFish fertilizer from Down to Earth. Um, you can see it's really high in nitrogen and high in phosphorus. So I typically like to start the tomatoes out with something high in nitrogen um, because I want them to, you know, put out a lot of green leafy growth. I don't want them to particularly focus on flowering at this point. Um, even though it's high in phosphorus, it is high in nitrogen, so it'll balance it out. So what I do is I just grab a little handful of it. I don't know, that's probably a, ta a teaspoon and a half, something like that. So I put that in the bottom of the hole and put a little more. And then I'm just going to kind of mix it in a little bit because I don't want to leave a clump of it in the bottom of the hole. I want the plant roots to be able to grow into it. And then the other thing is oyster shell. This is a really good source of calcium, which tomatoes love. So you can do this. You can do it this way. If you have a good source for oyster shell, this again is a down-to-earth product. I'm going to put about a tablespoon's worth in there, or teaspoon, excuse me. Put that in there. Kind of work that in a little bit too. Now, if you don't have oyster shell meal, you can just save your old eggshells dry them out, then if you can run them through a coffee grinder or something like that, this works just as well. But I happen to have the oyster shell powder, so I'm just going to use that. Okay, now on to this peat pot. You can see there are some roots that are growing, starting to grow through the side, but not a lot. So I don't want to leave this guy in here. I'm going to peel the pot away. And see, it does peel away pretty nicely. And you might break off some roots. It's no big deal. Yeah, look at all that nice root system there. So anyway, that's that. And since I'm going to be planting it deep, I want to take off some of these bottom leaves. 
So I'm just pinching them off. You can cut them off if you feel better about it, but it's just as easy to pinch them off. So there you go. Now that guy's going to go in the ground. Just backfill it. And again, he will form roots all along that stem. So that's that. Now, um, I do start out with the BioFish fertilizer. In about a month, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to like a rose and flower, something that's lower in the first number, which is nitrogen, and high in the middle number, which is phosphorus. So that's going to encourage it to bloom. But right now, I want it to concentrate on just growing. I don't want it to get into fruit mode right now. So now that that guy's planted, uh, in this greenhouse, what we typically do is we use um, tomato cages in here. You can do that, or you can, you know, put a single stake in. Um, tomatoes do need support. That's a, that's a big deal, especially if you're growing indeterminate varieties, which are very viney and tall. If you grow uh, determinate varieties like romas, you know, and things like that, they're going to grow shorter and bushier, so they don't necessarily need any big support system, but a little does help. Otherwise, they'll just kind of sprawl on the ground. That's fine, but uh, if you let them do that, then you're going to have problems with earwigs and roly-polies kind of getting into the fruit. So anyway, I'm going to water this guy in, and then we're going to take a walk up to the garden, and we'll show you some other ways that we are uh, staking and supporting the tomatoes up there. Okay, so now that's all watered in. One thing I do want to mention about watering tomatoes. Now, you did see us use the oyster shell meal uh, in the hole for the calcium. Most people use calcium to combat blossom end rot on tomatoes, which is really important. Tomatoes do need calcium. But I found that probably the number one cause of blossom end rot is irregular watering. So what happens typically here is the weather is, let's say, 75 to 80, and it'll be that way for a little bit. And then suddenly we have a week of like 90 or 95 degree temperatures. And especially in these raised boxes, it's hard to keep the soil mo moist enough for the tomatoes uh, during that time. So what happens is they're transpiring, you know, they're basically sweating, but they can't uptake the water fast enough to, you know, battle the, the blossom end rot. So we do get blossom end rot even though we use calcium, but in most cases you're going to find that that's uh, caused by watering issues and not necessarily calcium deficiency. But it is always a good idea to add that calcium to your soil. Um, but watering, you know, try to keep them watered regularly. That's the thing is don't let them dry out in between waterings too much. In the raised bed, I do water more than I do in the ground. Uh, they too tend to dry out faster. So anyway, that's just a little tip for you, for you on blossom end rot. So these tomatoes were planted probably uh, a few days ago. And what we did is we put the tomato cages on these. So you can see right from the get-go, we put them in so that they're going to grow into these cages. They're going to be a lot easier to train that way. Another thing with tomatoes that we do um, we typically grow a lot of them. So what I did here, I had some left over, so I just went ahead and potted them up into some one gallon containers. And I'm gonna let these guys get big and then probably plant them in big pots. Um, if I have some room still in the garden, I will plant them out there. But this kind of gives you some time. Like if you're planting, you seeded some tomatoes and they're just growing so fast, you can't get them planted fast enough into your garden. Uh, go ahead and just pot them up into a big pot and they'll be good for a while in here. So anyway, let's take a walk up to the garden. Okay, so now we're here in the garden. Uh, we're going to go through a couple of ways we stake the tomatoes in these rows. This is the first way, is we use bamboo stakes. You can use redwood stakes or whatever kind of garden stake that you have. What I've done here is just gone, you know, every two tomatoes I'll put a stake. I haven't completed the row, but I wanted to show you guys to kind of give you an idea of what we're going to do. So once these get up maybe, oh, about 
18 inches or so. What we'll do is we'll take like hemp twine or green garden tape, something like that, and we're gonna basically kind of tie them up between these two stakes. So we'll just wrap it around here, then go to this stake, and so on. So once we have that, once they grow a little bit, we have that going, we'll show you guys again what that is. But it's just nice to kind of keep them in a compact area. So let's show you what else we're going to try. Okay, so this is another thing that we're going to do. Uh, we did this a couple of years ago. We're going to try it with just one row of tomatoes again. Basically, we have a trellising system here that Tom built. And we're just using baling twine. We tie it to the top of this. And then just use the baling twine to come down to each tomato plant. And then there's these clips that you use that ties on to the, the twine and then it ties on to the tomato. So it's like a support system for the tomato. So you do try to start when they're fairly young. And I'm gonna move that down. And these clips are nice. You can see that it's just kinda kinda give that tomato a little bit of support. As it grows up, we'll just keep attaching it uh, to this twine. We're gonna try to keep it real narrow. Um, like I said, we did do this a couple years ago. It was okay, but I found that the birds really could see the fruit. So they were uh, a problem with the tomatoes uh, in that case. But we're gonna try it again and see how it works. And we'll give an update later on in the season. So another option for you to do trellising, you can do this with tomatoes. It works well for lots of things. We usually grow peas and beans on this system. I've grown cucumbers up it too. But all it is is it's T-posts. T-posts are nice because they're not a permanent thing. You know, you can move them, pull them out and move them. But just T-posts here. And then uh, this is just welded wire fencing. So this is an option for you. Uh, you could potentially plant a tomato and then just train it, tie it loosely up to this trellis. And there you go. So it would be kind of a more compact growing area. If you don't have a lot of room, that is an option for you too. Um, so anyway, I think that about wraps it up on tomatoes. I hope you found something helpful. I hope you have a great tomato crop this year. I hope we do because tomatoes are my favorite garden crop of all time. Uh, Right, Tom? <laughs> so anyway, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. If you have any questions or comments, we would love to hear from you. Thank you for subscribing. Um, if you haven't subscribed, just consider it if you want to see more garden videos. And until next time, happy gardening. Mm -hmm.